Welcome to Fire and Snow. I am Mason Zayed, and this is Allison Snow. And this week, we are going to talk about careers. That's right. Two extremely, ridiculously successful for our age, in my case, before the pandemic, and her case, always, um, women are going to give you guys some guidance. But before we get into that, Allie, what's mm-hmm. happened since we last talked? So Allie and I meet on Fridays and th- Sundays because Friday is the Muslim day of worship and Sunday is the Mormon day of worship. Um, sorry, the rest of you Catholics and Christians, they cornered it. I had nothing to do with it. I'm for equal rights for everyone. But it's really the Mormon day of worship. and. Um, I want to know what's happened in your world since we last met. Well, um, crazy busy for work. Uh, Cliff and the kids were here this weekend, and Cliff and Zuzu have already headed back up. Um, but up one- where? People don't know where up is. Up sounds like they're like climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. They're what? climbing. They're climbing that big mountain in Park City. I kind of love the fact that, like, you think that the default of up in America is, like, random podunk Utah. It's not even, like, Salt Lake City. You're talking about, like, someplace remote. Yeah, someplace tippy top. Yeah, everything, when you're down in San Diego, everything in America is up. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. That's true. But uh, at the same time, we're on a round ball, so no flat earthers here, but... (laughs) so they went back up to utah and i got to enjoy that freaking rad piece that you did with margaret cho oh thank you i'm fangirling (laughs) both of you it was insane and you guys need a show we need a show but you and i have a show so maybe she just join our show so um margaret cho was like a huge influence in my life for people who don't know who margaret cho is she is a badass comedian and she's super funny. You know, she's just literally one comic generation ahead of me. And uh, she had a sitcom that centered around the Korean American family and she went through hell. And like later in this episode, we're going to talk about Hollywood and hell and how they coexist um, yeah. in a very peaceful fashion. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and she was a major influence, so I was fangirling. And it was so funny when I got the Margaret Cho podcast. I hate not doing live shows, and I spend day and night trying not to become a character on Oxygen Snap, if you don't know what that is. Google it. I don't want to be it because I would not do well in prison. I would become a pet on the first day. So um, I was down in the dumps, and I told my publicist, Danny, because I have a publicist and, you know, a curious George doll. But um, I told him, I said, no more fucking, po- no more flipping podcasts. No more. So, like, I never, ever want to do podcasts. I see no point to them. I don't enjoy podcasts. I don't want a podcast. And I was like, no more podcasts. Because before the pandemic, it was a rule. But then during the pandemic, he softened me up because I had nothing else to do. So I was like, fine, I'll go on the five listeners on a Tuesday podcast. And then he was like, Margaret Cho wants you to do her podcast, but I know you don't want to do podcasts anymore. And I was like, oh, you're like, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, so that was really fun. So my week consisted of I had to move a month ago. I lived in a beautiful glass house that overlooked the Hudson River with an unobstructed yeah. view of the Gorgeous. George Washington Bridge. And now I live in a van down by the river. So <laughs> I hired these people called Task Rabbits to help me organize my house after I moved because who usually does it? Me. <laughs> Allie, I've only lived in two houses. My house that I was born and raised in, which I will someday return to triumphantly, and the house that I lived in, in the glass house for 10 years. Allie came and she set up that glass house and everything stayed in the exact same spot that she put it and never moved until I moved. So there was a pandemic. Allie couldn't come. I hired four task rabbits. I went and sat outside while they unpacked everything and they stole my lipstick caboodle with 170 lipsticks. 
And oh. Sandy of Lake were still in boxes because as Allie knows. If anybody gets to steal that, it's me. <laughs> my, my trick of the trade is I get my makeup done in malls across the country for my shows and you have to buy a lipstick. So I have a bunch of closed lipsticks, but I also have a bunch of discontinued because MAC makeup likes to mock me. And when I find a good color, they immediately discontinue it because clearly yeah, they're shake it up. making shades for Whitey and don't want to make something that perfectly <laughs> matches what Prince would refer to as a cinnamon girl. So I had like five sticks of rocker. I had like the whole Star Trek line. I had the Rihanna Viva Glam, which is impossible to get because now she's Fenty. All gone, but what's worse, they took my purple sparkly caboodle. Are you kidding? Have they no decency? They have no decency. That, that, that's like crossing a line that like should never be crossed. Yeah. Maybe so they that's have how my week was. Let's full circle back to A, if you're going to clean houses and organize stuff, maybe you don't steal three thousand dollars worth of jewelry because now i've become like an online detective and i'm going to all the fancy smancy re resale of the front lipsticks because where the fudge did you think i got them in the first place and i'm gonna find you i'm gonna google three of my obscure lipsticks and find them listed somewhere on poshmark and i'm gonna come and get you and that is my lawyer and she's gonna make sure that you die in jail for that caboodle. You got served. So Morning's out. You're a lawyer, I'm a hustler. What's your advice that you would give to a first year lawyer? They survived that first year of law school that's supposed to thin the herd, they passed the bar, they took the job that they weren't sure, should I take this, should I take that, they took it and now they're in their first year. What's your one minute of advice? Um, two things. One, take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. I, like, when I was in my first year, I worked at a big law firm. And so I had like the big law experience. Uh, and we came in and that first year you trauma bond with your, with your fellow first years. And those, those people in that class are still some of my best friends. Um, and so I, like treasure the people that are around you, uh, find something that you love to do, and then like go down that path, and then just put your head down and work. Uh, and the other thing, new lawyers think they gotta fight about everything. Realize you need to pick your battles, and that's a good mm. moral story for the rest of life, but first year lawyers, that's a struggle. So what should you not do? What should you not do? You should not get your uh, boss's dog drunk at a firm party. That happened. That's you super hot. Get happened. drunk and roll somebody's golf cart <laughs> <laughs> with your fellow classmate in there. There seems to be like a live not getting drunk, which I feel like <laughs> great advice. So my advice to comedians is pretty similar to yours, which is never say no to an opportunity. So in your first year, do it all. Go to every yeah. single open mic. They're the one with only seven Swedish tourists. Like now, like do every virtual class you can. Um, watch other comedians. Yeah. Not to compete, but to learn. That's like a big thing. Write jokes every single day, no matter what. No excuses. I don't write on paper. I don't type. I write in my head. But like each yeah. day, like the way some people would meditate, I sit down and I'm like, these are my jokes. This is what I'm going to um, talk about today. Never I've seen you go through that process. Like, I, and the whole time I'm like, dude, I think I'm hotter. <laughs> That's so cool that you've seen it. Yeah, I know. Like, we'll be there and I can see you working out how to deliver the, the, the shtick. It's yeah. It's pretty cool. It's so interesting, though, because you can see it, but I don't know how to recreate it for when people would be like, we're doing a slice of life piece and we want to see how you come up with your jokes. And I'm like, okay, ready? <laughs> yeah, that's the look. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because that's a, I don't know. Can I get away with it? Or is this when I get canceled? And then I was like, you can't get canceled when you never got a show on TV. Um, which brings me to um, 
know when to say no, know when to say enough is enough. Because like my big career story that I love to tell, because it's, it's like my Al Bundy touchdown from Married with Children. If you haven't watched it, you should. Um, I sold the show and it got hijacked by a non-Muslim, non-disabled um, witch, uh, popple, uh, rancid sack of vomit that was left out in the Arizona sun and accidentally shot on by someone whose diarrhea was only mayonnaise. <laughs> um, and I had to be able to, as a comedian, as an actor, as a creator, say, mm -hmm. I'm going to walk away from the best deal of my life because you have to know when to say no. So like, you have to know when to watch comics, when to learn. You have to know that if I say you have five minutes, it means you have five minutes. Nobody wants you to go over. It's like an equality for all thing. Everyone else had to do that time. You have to do it. You have to put your head down and be a headliner when it's time to be a headliner. Be an opener when it's time to be an opener. If Pat and Oswald calls me up, I'm an opener. It doesn't matter that I've performed for 35,000 people I know where my my place is but you also have to know to be like no I'm not going to work for free anymore and that wasn't yeah. the first year that was maybe the fifth year or the seventh year you have to know like no I'm not going to be the only woman on the panel I'm not going to be the only brown person yeah. in the room I'm not going to perform in a space where disabled people can't see my show I'm not going to let a non-disabled non-funny non-muslim woman put my character in pink boxing gloves and make me look like a palsy kangaroo. You have to know when to say no, but you want to know what I want to say yes to? A little song from you, because this is probably like 45 minutes long. Because although I remembered, to God, what a way to make a living. Now I'll keep singing while I struggle to stop the recording. <laughs> You're supposed to distract them from this face. Better taking than no giving, better lose your